God bless you again and welcome to another broadcast of the Brinson Institute. We're just so glad again to be with you on this week and we trust that your week has been full of creative, the creative genius of God working in your life on today and we trust that those of you that are under the sound of our voice and viewing us at this time are blessed and highly favored by God. I am just excited about what God is doing. And for you that have continuously, as we say every week, called us, called in, the number is at the bottom of your screen during the, sometime in the broadcast, you'll see our telephone number and our website. Just do call us in, check on our website to see what God is doing and how he is blessing us in this season. And I just came again to challenge you to let you know that God is able, he is real, and he has something for us in our lives in times like these. And so we're taking our time today to uh, share with you, giving you a chance to get on, for all of our friends to come on online and uh, be notified that we are live on the air at this point. And those of you that uh, wanna contact us, we just ask you to right where you are now, if you would just hit your share button, we're uh, on and we're trying to get ourselves readjusted. We've had a great day, a great week, and God has been blessing us. And so we're just excited about what God is doing. I encourage you as you continue to watch us at this hour from two to three o'clock. Every Wednesday, we come your way. Those of you that missed the broadcast and the telecast, you can always pick us up on YouTube Go to our YouTube and uh, just type, uh, type our name in the search bar, Dr. Sylvester Brinson the third. that's three capital I's, and go to our YouTube account and click on videos. And when you click on the videos, you'll be able to pick up any and all of our shows and any of the shows that you miss, you'll be able to pick those up. So we wanted you to know that, that it's available to you. And so at this point, we're just giving you a chance to come online and at this point, you might want to hit your share button. Wherever you are, just hit your share button and, uh, and, uh, and watch us. Just hit your share button and watch us wherever you are. And uh, I'm going to type in uh, my Brinson Connection. All of you that's a part of the Brinson Connection, uh, we thank God for you that have watched us. And thank God for all of you that are liking us. We're trying to get ourselves together on this um, on this uh, this show and uh, sometime advanced technology it, 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 it gets us but we're, we're endeavoring to learn how to beat the odds and learn how to really catch ourselves up on connecting with you so we thank all of you that uh, is on the show uh, and that contacts us and stay with us all the time so we got the Brinson connection up and running. Uh, so we hope that uh, you that are watching us have already went in and uh, I'm not getting what I needed, but that's all right. There we go. The Brinson connection is tied in. And so, well, we thank God again. And for you last week, ooh, that was a challenge. Those of you that watched, uh, uh, that, those of you that watched our show last week. No, it was more than a notion on last week. We had some challenges. We were dealing with familiar spirits and uh, wow, it seemed like we was attacked. It was a heavy, even even our production man was like, wow, that's a heavy one. Well, amen. That's, that's sometimes the way it go. When you start dealing with principalities and powers, you have to be able to be ready to deal with the backlash. Today, I want to talk and share about how we need to be as we relate to ourselves in ministry. In ministry, we have, God has blessed us, and those of you that might want to monitor my timeline, every Thursday we have our sons and daughters gathering. The sons and daughters gathering. In fact, we've changed our round table to every first Saturday. Every first Saturday from 8, 8, 9, 8.45 to 9.45, we have our fellowship breakfast, and then from 9.45, 10 o'clock to 12, we have the gathering of sons and daughters. All of our sons and our daughters, our apostolic sons and daughters, 
our spiritual sons and daughters, our mentees, those we mentor, and those in colleagues, along with their sons and daughters, we gather ourselves together for motivation, talking, empowerment, so that we can continue to sing the same song. I believe more than ever before now that God is moving us to begin to get into our movements, where we then begin to identify, identify our tribal identity. If we're going to have a bouquet of flowers, then all the flowers that are in the bouquet have to grow where they are planted in the best soil so they can be produced in excellence. So then when they are added to the mix, they look good. When you order a basket of fruit, apples don't grow where oranges grow, bananas don't grow where apples grow, but wherever they grow, they grow strong so that when you bring them and collect them and put them in the basket, they become unified as fruit. I believe that the body of Christ is somewhat similar. God has many of us in different places assigned to different ministries and different geographical locations and different denominations and different cell groups, but it's still one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And so I think we need to begin to strengthen ourselves and begin to be open to those around us or who God put us around so that we can strengthen our gifts our talents and our specialization areas as we come together from our different varieties of ministry assignments to represent what God is doing through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the church, thy kingdom come through the church. And so, as we are doing that, one of the things uh, we have every Thursday evening, Central Standard Time, we have a, a gathering of sons and daughters show that has been hosted out of North Carolina. I'm the host, my co-host out of North Carolina, Apostle Dr. Uh, Dixon hosts, co-hosts the show. We're on live for one hour, and some of our sons and daughters and others are on the show, and we're talking and we're sharing. This past Thursday, and then it's also rebroadcast on Sunday evenings and Monday mornings. If you go on my timeline, you will see the flyer and be able to join us and join us as a son or a daughter. One of the things that we're really interested in is getting sons and daughters. If you are a son and daughter, then you know what it is. We have a lot of vagabond spirits and a lot of, as Jesus says, bastard people. They're not sons. They don't want to be sons and daughters. They just want to do what they want to do, how they want to do it. They don't want to be chastised. They don't want to be organized. They don't want to be disciplined. They don't want to be trained. He said, if you don't esteem that, then you're a bastard and not a son or a daughter. You don't have parenting. Who is your spiritual parenting? Who, who parents you? Where did you come from? What tribe? Paul told Timothy, that which you have seen and heard of me teach faithful men that will teach others. So what group are you in? Are you the teacher teaching others? Are you submitted yourself to a student? And once being a student, are you now teaching others and we're growing and we're holding people accountable as we move generationally from one era to the other to continue what God is doing down through the generations until he called us home? Uh, on this rock I build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. So from generation upon generations until he comes again, the church has the right and the privilege and the anointing and authority to teach and train, to give doctrine, exhortation and comfort and to begin to be a guiding for what the kingdom is to be like in this world, but not of this world, but yet in this world. And so one of the things that... Uh, I begin to do is on our Thursday night, one of our spiritual sons, Apostle Dr. Smalls, and I want to give him his kudos as we were talking and sharing this past Thursday. He made some statements and it was so profound. It was just so profound. It challenged me. In fact, all of us, we stopped talking. We was taking notes as he shared. Isn't it sometimes, no matter how much you know, what you do, that others can stretch you? I like to be around people who challenge me. I like to be around people who can stretch, stretch it, give the mystery, give the revelation, give the illumination so we can have the confirmation to do the application. So I just, that just is where we ought to be constantly growing, constantly being stretched, constantly being motivated and inspired. He said some things and I want to kind of carry over some things that uh, my spiritual son, 
Apostle Dr. Smalls from Radcliffe, Radcliffe, Kentucky, who was pastoring, a founder, pastor in the Church of God, and also a bishop in the Church of God. But he's a part of our network as, as well in over our Kentucky area. And we're so glad for him and Dr. Donna Smalls. We, we celebrate what God is doing in their lives and their son, uh, Smalls Jr., that is now over and carrying on the work of the church founded by him. He said three things that we need to be about in our ministries as we look at ourselves ongoingly. And I want to kind of try to try to give this teaching based upon what he shared with us. He talked about three things that we need to be looked that we need to look at in our ministries. He said num number one, this is what he's learned. He pioneered a church, started a ministry doing well, and as he grew the church and his son grew up under him, he turned the church over to his son. And now he sits as a person watching God use his son in the ministry. He's not an older man. Smalls is a probably a little younger than I am by a couple of years, just a few years. And now he's doing some other things. And now also the Church of God in which he was a bishop in has called him to go and take another one or two of their churches in that region. So as he's pastoring in a, a Church of God and also has his own apostolic ministry in which his son is now pastoring and doing both and doing ministry and building a family and have grandchildren and all of that, he said he learned some things. He said he learned three things that was important. One, reevaluate. Two, replenish yourself. Three, reengage yourself. Reevaluate what you're doing. Replenish what you have done. And reengage yourself in ministry. I want to talk about those three entities as it relates to us. I was blessed by that teaching and I want to share it with you and embellish upon it about what it means because one of the things we have to do in order to, uh, we have not learned is that God always in Ecclesiastes it says to everything under the sun there is purpose and time. Everything there is a season, a purpose and a time. In the teaching from Ecclesiastes, the wisdom speaker, he talks about it's a time to this and a time to do that. That means that a time to engage and it's a time to disengage. But in your disengagement, you have to evaluate what you have utilized in order to replenish what you have used in order to then to re-engage and continue in your process. I was like, wow, you know, that's important because how many of us have learned how in our ministries to step back and disengage ourselves? You know, and if we don't learn how to disengage for a time, we cannot re-engage. Even, even for those of you that understand better transmissions, when you shift transmissions, there has to be a disengagement of the teeth that, that turns the wheel to go into a greater teeth or a smaller teeth. There has to be some disengagement to engage. What some of us have failed to do in our life and in our ministry is learn how to rest, learn how to come aside and disengage so that we can reevaluate and hear what God is saying as we prepare to replenish and put back that which is used up so that we can begin to re-engage in another level. The Bible says every branch of me that bear it fruit, I purge it, I cut on it, I, get, I, I cut on it, I disengage other parts on it so that can bring forth more fruit. Some of you all are wondering why that God has for you have said, I want you to stop doing this, or I want you to switch over here, or I want you to transfer over there. Could it be that God in his kairos timing and will in the midst of your chronos of your eternity, that uh, of your time, of your time, that eternity kairos has sp spoken into your time. God's eternity by his will 
have addressed it into your time. His kairos has entered into time, chronos, and said based upon kairos entering into your chronos, this is where I have for you in this season. This is a new season. Or I want to give you a perspective of where you are. You may be in the middle of a season. Or you may be coming out of a season to prepare yourself for rest to go into a new season. Or the issues in this season is so tantamount and strong. I need you to pause and rest in the mid-season so that I can strengthen you to continue to the end of your season. Depending upon your assignment. So... As I began to listen and understand what Dr. Smalls was saying, it just occurred to me. I said, wow. So that means we must always be uh, uh, sensitive to be able to discover the Kairos timing, God's prophetic timing. And if we don't disengage, God said, okay, that's enough. Stop that. Stop here. I want you to pick up here. Well, God, this is just so good. Is no God said, no, no, but, but you have finished in that area. Sometimes we're like certain people. I'm going to start what I finish. And sometimes in the apostolic prophetic, God didn't tell you to finish a thing. He wants you to start a thing. And sometimes he lets you start to get sensitized to what he's doing to prepare you to upgrade you or where you need to go and not necessarily finishing out the assignment. Now, in some cases, he wants you to finish your assignment. In other cases, he just wants you to release what you have right now, stop cold turkey, and now shift into something new because I only had you in here for a season and a timing. Now, others said, well, Brinson, you know, uh, you at least, I mean, you know God all at least, Give us a segue. Sometimes God does allow us a segue to reflect and uh, have a little sabbatical leave. But then sometimes God will come in abruptly and said, okay, finish up out of here. Okay, let's move on. And we just, we, we start putting out with God, I'm not ready yet. Oh, you're not ready to obey me? You're not ready for my timing in your life? Oh, no, 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 no. You cannot disobey Kairos timing. In your chronos. Because what's happening in your chronos, or your year, your month, well, God, if you wait to 2020, uh, 2020, because then no, 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 that's you. That's your flesh. God said, no, I give you the resources to do for me what I want. And so the resources that I'm about to provide for you is when the context of time, context, a geographical area, time, within the context of covenants. With the context of releasing, with the context of preparing to receive, within the context of receiving and multiplying, all that is when the context of my provision for the vision. Provision. Pro, B, P, R, O in the Greek means to before. Pro, before. Vision, I see. Vision to see. So before I see. Provision says before I I move you to a move a moment in your life before I get you started. I already saw what you need. In fact, I've walked through the process to understand all the challenges and pitfalls that you're going to have to begin to warn you so it don't come up like this. Before I see. I see before I give you the assignment what you need, your resources, where you're supposed to be, and how you're supposed to gather, and where you're supposed to be in order to have fruit for your ministry. A lot of you all are pastors and apostles and bishops and leaders and regular members of the body of Christ, and you don't have what you say you need to have in order to do what you say you need to do because you're tied into another's ministry, another's assignment, and maybe God assigned you to be with that assignment for a season. Your season is up, but because it's easy, it's friendly, and you like it, you want to hang in there. And what you don't know, when you do that, you're just committing uh, situations to frustrate your purpose and your destiny. So, if we don't disengage when the Holy Spirit says it's time to disengage, time to back off 
it's time to come aside and rest a while. Jesus was constantly doing that. As he went out, did what he had to do. And while the disciples say, say he went in, he went up into the mountains to pray. Even when he was ready to name his apostles, he had to disengage himself from the group that he had elected to be with him for a higher group. Did y'all get that? Jesus has to retire out his main group of folks for a higher group. All right, so now, sometimes God put us in a position where you have to be the videographer of two or three different ministries, but they're in a different kind of concept, but they're somewhere closer nearby. And so God blesses you. He gives you enough energy to sustain and be able to be there for whomever you are videoing for because he knows people committed to that is scarce that we find them. So let's take a look at what do we need to do as we look at reevaluate, replenish, and re-engage. I wanted to start off to say, if you do not disengage in the Kairos time, you will continue to engage you and not properly evaluate yourself. See, you cannot properly evaluate yourself until you uh, disengage to re-engage. You don't know who your value is. None. You, you, you can't know that. So you have to stop what you're doing to be reflective. Some people say, well, no, Apostle Branson, I can be reflective while I'm doing. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. But I don't think you'll be efficient. Sometimes you need quiet time. You need to pause. You need to say, that's good. You know, God, when he created the heavens and the earth, he, he, he worked. He said the evening and the morning was the first day. And God saw it and said, that's good. But he, the earth, the world was not created yet all the way. There were pieces that need to be recreated, and there were pieces that had to be uh, uh, created, but not recreated, but those were pieces that had to be activated. So now, as we take a look at it, then we have to say, okay, God, what is it that you called me for? What did you call me for? What have I been activated for? Let me then evaluate my place, my person skills, and my position of what you want me to do under certain headings and certain, certain titles. So if you don't disengage, you will continue to engage. If it's come time for you to disengage because the, the, the modality is constantly changing on the belt of time, and then when you finally decide to disengage like you should have, that pitch is down the road, way gone. When you should obey Kairos time and he gave you a season to disengage based upon what you do and how you live. So, okay, so I must engage in a process and a project and be sensitive no matter what happens in life that I'm not going to be in this position all my life and all my life saving up this suit, this idea, until it just falls off me. But I'm going to be engaging others and engaging people as they come. That's number one. So if you don't properly evaluate yourself, you will keep missing your target. How many of you have set goals? and have a target to complete this, complete that. And then in the midst of your set goals and your target, something happens that's devastating, that's traumatic. If we're not careful, we will start medicating the pain and frustration of something that's unexpected and miss the time frame and timing of our assignments and will not be able to properly evaluate from where we are to where we're going because we are still stuck at 
the other person on the team didn't evaluate and give me my information so I can give it to you. We want to be we want to be different from that. So we want to look at how does how do I do that? How do I reevaluate? Let's take a look on most of the stories of the Bible, the Old Testament, of the prodigal son and different other things, building the walls, have something to do with these three. Uh, evaluate, uh, replenish, and encourage. Let's kind of walk through it now and see where we are. So I put some notes to myself uh, because I wanted to make sure that I remember. Now, let me understand and say this. In your e re-evaluation, and we're going to get more into it, as you evaluate properly, as you learn how to properly evaluate from the issues and the facts at hand, because you uh, then must understand, once you properly do that, then you can be tuned in to your evaluation, your e whole evaluation. So you got to, if you keep missing the target, which is the purpose of your call. If you keep missing the target, which is the purpose of why God you got, got you out here. If you keep missing your call, because it is the purpose for God calls you to purpose based upon his foreknowledge of you and based upon what he's put in you. And so if you continue and don't act like what's in you is on you, then the list get read. The list, get rid of the things that uh, you need to do that you have not done. And God holds back on you because you have not let go to reestablish what you need. So, what did Jesus do? He had all these followers. He said, the Bible said he went up into a mountain. And when he had prayed all evening, he came, came back and he called his disciples. He called his disciples. We know there was at least a hundred or two to three hundred disciples, but he called his disciples, and out of that he called twelve to become, to be apostles. Twelve to be apostles, so they can become it through his teachings and his traveling with them. He called twelve. And then out of that call, he taught and trained. And it's out of that group that expanded that 12 apostles, uh, over 500, Paul said he was seen over three to 500, and then out of all that, 120 showed up in the upper room. The church was birthed out with 120 people, give and take, in the upper room. And now, look where we are and what we have as a church ministry. Okay, so now, once we understand that, that we now, we are called now to reevaluate ourselves. So what am I doing? What did God say? Some of you all seriously need to pause for station identification and sit yourself down somewhere quiet. Pray and ask God to give you an understanding of what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. What does it mean to be a body, a part of Bible? What are the protocols and what are the rules and regulations of being a member of the body of Christ? So therefore, I become a spiritual son and daughter to the church ministry. And so based upon that, how do I evaluate my progress? Based upon that, how am I evaluating my time? So I take my time. I do a lot of things with my time. But if God has got a purpose in the midst of that, and you realize that you are more like an octopus and you have different assignments, then how do you work your different assignments with excellence if you have not purely re-evaluated your gifts, replenished your gifts from what you took out, and re-engaged back into warfare? If you have not done that, then wow, you, you're missing it. You're missing the first stage. So let's go back. I need to reevaluate. In order for me to reevaluate, I need to disengage.
when I disengage, I'm doing that because I'm on standby to re-engage once I disengage. And then I need to replenish. And then I need to re-engage. Now let's go back. I want to talk about that, evaluate, evaluate, reevaluate, replenish, and re-engage from the Genesis principle of the creation story. And then we need to talk about it after pre-creation, after the flood, and after Jesus coming and dying, because when man sinned in the garden, it changed the whole structure. And so we need to take that information and pull it over for its own file so we can look at it and take a loose what we are missing as we grow as members of the body of Christ. So now, let's look at uh, my capacity to not be off in my reevaluation. Because if I'm off in my reevaluation, I cannot be rightly on if um, I keep missing the target. Sometimes we miss the target so much, it's normal. And so when we believe God and ask God for certain things, whether our attitudes that we receive it may not be what we suppose. It's normal. I knew it. I knew I would. I knew I would. I knew, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, so you found out that somehow you missed it in your reevaluation. So let's look at it. Let's look, let's look at it um, from Genesis. Let's go back to this whole thing of how things got started. And I want to read from Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, which is crucial to uh, where we are at this point. So look at Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 28, and let's see what it says. Let's go to 27. So God created him in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, not him, them. And God said unto them, not him, them. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air, and over everything that creepeth upon the earth. So now God has given from the beginning of creation that assignment. He said, be fruitful. Now, in my reevaluate, replenish, and engagement a scheme of thing, have I been fruitful? Be fruitful, not one day I'm going to become fruitful. No, 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 no. No. Be fruitful. Be in. Be in fruitfulness. Bear some fruit. And if you don't bear fruit, I'll take you away. How many of us don't bear no fruit, but we always in God's face? And wonder why God has ignored us. Well, you blessed because every branch that bear, bear not fruit, he take it away. Every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that he may bring forth more fruit. There's an expectation that whatever you do in life, people are going to want more. So the question is, are you prepared to give them more? Okay, so let's look at it. Be fruitful. If you can get past being fruitful, if you you can reproduce, but you can't be fruitful outside of a covenant. Wow. Some of us, we want to be fruitful and want to know why we not bearing fruit because you can't bear fruit without covenant. It takes two to bear fruit. It takes an engagement of something. It takes the seed dying in the ground. It takes the seed, the ground, the ground and the oil, and the, the ground and the dirt and all of that in the dirt to coordinate itself with the seed 
and between the, the water and dirt and the seed and no sun and some sun, there's a relationship established. And with the relationship that established, now I can produce some fruit. How many of you at that level? You've been around this church quite a while. You've been around this church, and where's your fruit? Who have you engaged in and interrelated in that stretched you to reproduce an other? Bear fruit. Bear it. Produce it. I'm going to bless you. I said, now, nah, I need you. I need you to uh, be fruitful. Always coming out with something. Be fruitful. Now, once you can get past that mandate of assignment and understand what being fruitful is, knowing that the fruit comes out of its own kind, then you're able to now do the second thing and multiply. What you mean? I'm challenged to bear fruit. Now, once I get through this birthing and bearing fruit, now I have to learn how to multiply myself and others. Just not one of me. I've gone through that. God's holding me accountable just more than just one of me. He wants me to bear fruit, make a connection, and bring forth much fruit. Some 60, some 100, some 60, some 100, some 30 fold. Whatever your assignment is and whatever capacity God has you in, in this season, you must be able to bear fruit. So, now, once you are doing that, now you have to multiply the fruit. Wait a minute, Apostle. You mean after I go through the process and be dug around and put in the manure and uh, Go through the things of life just to birth out fruit. You're telling me God said, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to move from bearing. I want you to move from, uh, in our image, I want you to move from being fruitful to multiply. Part of being fruitful is to multiply. If you're in my image, anything that I produce, I can produce more of it. I want you to be fruitful and multiply. So I need you to multiply out of your fruitfulness. Now some people, they want to multiply. Oh, I want God to do this. I want him to bless me here and bless me there and bless me there and bless me there. Hey! Hey, wait! You multiply out of your fruitfulness. Not the willingness to be fruitful in every area and then multiply. No, no. Be fruitful and multiply. Multiply from your fruit base. Multiply out of your isness. Be fruitful and multiply. Now, in your multiplication of being, from being fruitful to multiply, you want to incur a lot of use of the earth, of the land base. So you're going to have to learn that you just don't take, 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 take. As you mature in some area of your life, you have to give. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over with men giving to your bosom. If you're going to be able to be in the place of fruitful and multiply, now we're going to replenish to put back. You got to have something in order to put back. Some of us, we've been fruitful. And we have multiplied ourselves in certain areas out of being fruitful. But we have not been able to replenish. That's a factor. You know what the fact of replenishing is, is? Is restoration, restore. It's it's about a Sabbath. So God rested on the Sabbath day. And the Sabbath started at sundown to sunset. From in the evening, Friday evening, when the sun went down to the next morning, to the sun rose. From the sun set to the sun down was known as the Sabbath. Some of the reasons I suggest to you that our fruit is not effective and efficient is because we have not taken a Sabbath 
which is the process of replenishing what was used. We just go on and 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 on. Uh, keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praying my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Ain't got time to die. Say it. I know that comes from the scripture. Keep so busy working for my master. Keep so busy working for my master. Keep so busy working for my master. Ain't got time to die. Now he said, if I don't praise him, the rocks are proud. Well, that the way you going, you ain't going to be able to praise him. You know why? You're not going to be able to praise him? Because you didn't burnt yourself out. You've been fruit, multi, fruitful. You've been multiplying, but you never stopped long enough to regain your momentum. Because your momentum keeps pushing you. Keeps pushing you. God calls us back. To replenish that which we have released. One of the things Dr. Small said when he was on the phone, he said that he learned that, you know, he that sometime we get into the fight. I'm working. I'm doing ministry. We don't have time for ourselves, our family, nobody. I'm working. I'm doing ministry. I'm doing ministry. So we get caught up in the momentum of the fight. The momentum of the fight. We get caught up in the momentum of the fight, the struggle. We just get caught up. We're working. We're in ministry. We're preaching. We own this. We own that. We're flying around the country. We're reading. We're studying. Praise God. We just in there. We just in there. We just in there. And so we caught up in what Dr. Smalls called the momentum of the fight. That when it's time for us to disengage. It's, it's a struggle. It's a struggle to release that which we got a hold on because we hold it on it so much to try to make it grow and pull it and grow and pull it. God said, okay, let it go. Be like, no, God, I worked on this too hard. Let this ministry, oh, no, go Hey, God, this is my ministry. Give this part of the ministry to somebody. Oh, no, no, God, you don't understand. I, I spent 15 years building this. I spent 10 years birthing this. God said, no, 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 but it ain't yours. It's mine. I allowed you to be a steward. You was a steward of an assignment. You was a steward of a particular ministry. Now you didn't got the big head and say it's my ministry. No, 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 no. No, I allowed you to build this, grow this. You use my anointings and my giftings to be a steward over it. And now I'm saying to you to release that to replenish yourself because if it came out of your essence, I need you to be able to create more by releasing that which you have so I can give you either a change in the process or uh, a law in your borders or, or, or upload a new software on top of what you have or make it more relevant in changing times and seasons so you don't get caught up in just the old wine scheme. How many of us struggle to let stuff go that God bless you to build? God bless you to build this, to put it together. And now God says, I need you to let it go. And you so no, 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 no. God, now you know, man. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have nothing. For, see, that's why I told you, don't be, don't, don't, don't give me nothing. And then I want to keep it and then you want it back. God said, I need to test you to see if you caught up into it or you caught up to me. So that's the test of Abraham and Isaac. He said, I'm going to give you a son. Oh, I'm a Sarah's barren. She can't get pregnant, can't have a son. God said, oh, no, I'm going to give you a miracle. How many of us have received a miracle from God? Unusually. Unusual well. And God said, now, give it back. You be like, huh? Give it. Come on now. Come on, God. That, that's, that's the devil. Every devil is a lie. We blame so much stuff on the devil. We give the devil so much credit. But sometimes God used Satan to test us and to put fire under us. And we and sometimes Satan even got there because our strong man, our stronghold, our imaginations, how we think, and our carnal mind and our natural mind that are just in empty. We can't walk in the spirit and think in the spirit. Because so we so involved in trying to hold on to something that belonged to God. 
that he said give it back. He said, now take your only son, your only son, and I want you to offer him up to me. Now he could have said, well, now wait a minute, God. Now we need to get this understanding. First of all, I didn't have no son. I had Ishmael, and we were doing fine. Until you came in and said you was going to give Sarah, Sarah a miracle. So why are you going to give me something that I was already satisfied? I had accepted my situation. Some of you all had accepted your situation, and I'm prophesying to somebody. Somebody had accepted your situation and circumstance in life, and your dysfunction has become your normal. And God intervened in that, rectified your stuff, made your crooked straight, and smoothed out your roughness, and moved you into a new dimension in him. And then he comes back and said, now I want it. Abraham, sack, take your own son and sacrifice. Abraham said, oh, the Lord give it, the Lord take it, yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll go ahead and sacrifice that. Can you sacrifice, can you let go, are you so caught up in the momentum, the momentum of an assignment of trying to make the kingdom come, the momentum child, I got to do what the Lord say do, that you won't take a sabbatical and rest enough to reevaluate where you are so that you can replenish what you've taken out can you replenish what the spirit have taken from you? The spirit, what your virtue have gone out. Virtue have gone out of you. So you need to replenish, but you can't replenish until you evaluate and reevaluate what was taken out. So if you don't know what's taken out, how can you replenish? So some of us need to go back and reevaluate our evaluation to see what do we need. After we've been fruitful and multiplied, we must replenish. The agricultural community understand that. That's the Sabbath. The holiness of rest. You keep on working your body. Keep on working your body. Don't get no sleep. Don't get no sleep. One day your body going to cock out on you. It said, I need you to replenish. You was fruitful. You multiplied out of your fruitfulness. But in the proof, you wore out some issues, some nutrients and stuff. So I need you to r and I need you to take vacation. I need you to rest, to rejuvenate. You need to be rejuvenated. And then so you can replenish. So they do that, what? In the farm community, agriculture. This year, we're going to raise corn. Based upon the corn's process, based upon the fact of it being fruitful out of the ground, the seed dies and bears much fruit. And it bears the fruit, and it multiplies itself. And based upon that process, this year, it takes certain nutrients, certain types of fruit, takes certain nutrients out of the soil. So if we let the ground rest the season, the nutrients will come back in the soil. So we'll either not plant this season, or we'll transfer from this, we'll transfer crops. So since corn takes out certain nutrients from the ground, next year we're going to plant soybeans. So soybeans is a give and take. It's going to bring nutrients in the ground as it takes nutrients from the ground. So certain nutrients that was taken from the ground from the corn is being re-put in by the soybean. So within the uh, birthing, and the making being, being fruitful and multiplying is the cycle of replenishing. The ecosystem replenishes itself given time of rest. And so when you do the Old Testament, he says, uh, you can do stuff for, for six years. On the seventh year, don't till nothing. Just let, the, let it grow just like it's going to grow. Because on the sixth year, I'm going to give you double. I'm going to give you double. So at certain times, I'm going to give you double in your life, double in your ministry. Some of you all... God bless you with extra money and stuff. Now you just want to make more money instead of going, taking a day off and rest, go treat yourself out, go out to dinner. You just run, 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 run. Then you want to know why you sick and broke down because you have not learned how to reevaluate, to replenish, to re-engage. So, all right. So we need to take a Sabbath. It's our position to replenish ourselves because 
we have to understand the writer said, in him we live, move, and have our being. So if I'm in him, I have to work with him, for him, and in order to be in him, with him, and for him, I have to understand I have to take a Sabbath cycle of relaxation, for meditation, for strength, for rejuvenation. And Jesus constantly went up in the mountains to pray and to be refortified. Taking a Sabbath. That was built. Well, that's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. No, no. The, the concept, the concept and principle stand. God did not make us to operate 24-7. No, no, no. Anybody that's alive right now that functions 24-7 soon have a breakdown. You end up having a nervous breakdown. You have a physical breakdown. You catch a cold because what? You have not fully rested. You have not taken the right, you have not ate properly. You have not got your mind cleared up. So you all messed up because you run, 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 run. Or as the doctor said, you burn the candles from both ends. And God never created anything to do that. He even said, as the earth remain, seed time and harvest. Well, I just keep planting seed, keep planting seed, keep planting seed. You know, you planted some seed. Now sit down now and wait. Do some other do some other activities to maintain and grow that seed. Don't just keep planting seed because you got to get a harvest now. So you got to change in your modality what you do because you're not in planting season now. You're in nurturing season to reap a harvest and then you're in harvest season. And then there's cold and heat. Winter and spring, summer and fall, whatever. But it's a cycle. So what's your life cycle like? Are you good for the kingdom? Do you have a cycle? So if I don't evaluate and reevaluate myself when God says I need to do, and I don't disengage when God said I need to disengage, and I continue to engage and evaluate, then I don't properly evaluate. So some of us say, Brinson, I'm evaluating. But your evaluation and conclusion of a matter is off, predicated upon the fact that the timing and the disobedience to what you were supposed to do is off. So if you are in an off season, not doing what you're supposed to do, then the conclusion of the finished product in your off season is not the truth of your finished product because your count is overdrawn or under, under drawn, and so you don't get a true measurement of where you are. And so say a lot of us, we're not at a true measurement. I see I'm not going to finish this process. I see it's going to be a part two, so I'm just going to take my time. And you you that are tuned in, you know that you're going to have to get me in, in a part two because I'm going to stretch this because I want to work on these three. Uh, evaluate, replenish, engage. Reevaluate, replenish, and re-engage. So let's look at it. Okay, so if then we are supposed to be in a cycle of constantly moving to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, and in the process of being fruitful, the Bible says that he asked for us to be fruitful and our fruit remain. So if we be fruitful and our fruit remain, then guess what? He purges and pr he prunes us to bring forth more fruit. The principle of, multi of bringing bearing forth fruit is to bear forth more, much fruit because in the bearing forth of much fruit is the multiplication of your capacity to bring forth. Be fruitful and multiply. Not be one thing. No, be fruitful. Full of fruit. Fruitful. Full of it. Fruitful. Full of it. And every branch that bear it fruit, I purge it that it may bring forth more fruit, that it may be full of fruit, 
that it may be able to walk in the excellence of the optimum potentiality of the capacity to multiply oneself and be fruitful, the activity of full of fruit. I'm full of fruit, and then I'm multiplying myself all over the place. Got some over here, got some over here. So, you know, sometimes our frustration is we allow ourselves to get stuck in one modality, one model, one moment. Well, I'm over here on 63rd Street, and I'm doing this and doing that. And it's a, can you reproduce what you did on 63rd Street on Fifth Avenue? Can you pick up all your stuff and keep this going and leave part of it over here and take that and plant? Can you be the apple for truth? The app, You take one seed and plant it. It becomes a tree full of apples. Take one apple off of the tree that of the one seed you planted of the fruitfulness and take it and plant it over here in the same kind of soil. Generate the soil. Know where your specificities are. Understand what you do. Because some of us, you know what? We keep sowing in the wrong soils. We're not clear on the type of soils that is most beneficial to our anointing. We still find ourselves caught up where people reject us. Caught up where people reject us. Now let me say something about that. You can go to a place designated by God and the soil for what you see ain't right. Don't leave because God is going to recreate the soil. Some rain, some other stuff that's a part of the environment is going to reposition what you've been sent to to accommodate your assignment. God can put you somewhere where you have many adversaries to what you do. That's nothing more but than a thermometer to understand where you are because in every person, there's a thermometer and a thermostat. The thermometer tells you about the heat or the cold that's in a room. The thermostat regulates the environment of the room. So if you're not walking in thermometer, thermostat mode, and you just a thermometer, every time I talk to you and every time you share, you constantly telling God what it is, what it is, what it is. But I gave you power. I gave you power to step on and regulate and reorganize and put things together. So when you go to a place, you need to do an assessment or does this place have the capacity to hear from God? God is sending me into this region, but also I have choice. So I'm going to send you, he said, I'm sending you two by two. When you enter a city, I'm sending you to a region. So in the region I'm sending you, there are choices of cities. Sometimes as you choose to go into a city, the spirit will say, no, I don't want you to go to that city, go to this city. Like he said, Paul, Paul said, we'll say to go to but the Holy Spirit forbade us because we got a Macedonian call, but it was still in the geographical area, but come over here and help us. And God gave me an open door, but there's adversaries because the adversary said, I'm going to meet you at the open door. The adversary don't meet you at doors that ain't open to you because it's, that ain't open. But the minute you get an open door somewhere, no, the, the backlash and the adversary is going to come. So if you have not been rejuvenated, you tired and woe out. You don't have no armor bears, no intercessors, no nothing. You all by yourself. You solid in solitude and oh, in the midst of your vicissitudes, you don't get no magnitude and no aptitude, altitude chain. You just burn out. So now we've got to reassess where we are, what we do, what God is saying. So as we leave today in part one, we looked at reevaluate, replenish, reengage. We're going to continue this teaching on next week. But until then, you need to start thinking about am I what what's going on with me? Let's start doing some reevaluation of ourselves so we don't miss our target. Until next time, be blessed.